A conjugate is a way that we can rationalize denominators. It specifically has to do a lot, and uh, this is more for um, square roots, okay? Because if we look at this, the difference of squares, right? A squared minus B squared is the same as A minus B times A plus B. So these are conjugates right here. A minus B and A plus B. Because when we multiply them, we get the difference of squares, okay? What this does is it, it gets rid of the square root if we have any. For example, let's say that A in this case, that didn't, that's not erasing. Let's say that A was, I don't know, the square root of two, right? So if I had the square root of 2 minus b, let's say that it's the square root of 3, doesn't really matter. Then its conjugate would be the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. And so I really end up with the square root of 2 squared minus the square root of 3 squared which is just 2 minus 3. See how that worked out really nicely there? It's going to work out the same way with the fractions we're going to be working with now when it asks us to rationalize either a numerator or, den or denominator. Now, again, with these ones, with the numerator and denominator stuff, it's only going to give you one or the other. So you've just got to multiply it by its conjugate. All right, so let's rationalize this denominator with the conjugate. Right here, we've got the square root of 7 minus 4. So we're going to need to multiply the square root of 7 minus 4 by its conjugate, which is going to include the same values, square root of 7 and 4. But instead of subtraction, now we will use addition. And we're going to need to multiply it in the numerator as well. So that's the square root of 7, and that's plus 4 in the numerator as well. So we're going to multiply these, okay? Now, this gives us, once again, the difference of squares. If it really helps, and that's the way I'm going to do this example. If, if we can't memorize the difference of squares, then we can FOIL this thing, okay? So this is the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is 7. Square root of 7 times positive 4 is a positive 4 square roots of 7. Then I've got this negative 4 times the square root of 7, so negative 4 square root of 7. And negative 4 times 4 is a negative 16. Well, some of you guys notice already that this, these two are just going to cancel out. And that's in our denominator, right? In the numerator, we're going to need to distribute this 3, so that would be 3 times the square root of 7 plus 3 times 4 is 12. Now, this would simplify into 3 times the square root of 7 plus 12 all over, and I can combine these, 7 minus 16, which is a negative 9. And then if I check the homework, yeah, what we're going to need to do is simplify this even further if it's possible. What I mean by that is I'm going to split this up into two separate fractions. So I've got 3 square root of 7 over negative 9 plus 12 over negative 9. And what does this do for us? Well, <clears throat> it'll give us... Uh, 3 divided by 9 is 1 third, so I got the square root of 7 over negative 3. Then I'm going to add this to the 12 and that 9 are also divisible by 3. So let's go and divide these by 3. And I end up with 4 over negative 3, which means I can rewrite this if I wanted to as one single fraction, square root of 7 plus 4 over negative 3. On the test, I'm okay with either of these. 
on the homework, I want to say they may be looking for something like